Welcome to the League of Women Voters of Wake County Virtual Candidate Forum for the Wake County Board of Education. My name is Cheryl Tung and I serve as president for the League of Women Voters of Wake County. The League of Women Voters of Wake County is a nonpartisan organization dedicated to empowering voters and defending democracy. We encourage informed and active participation in government, help citizens increase their understanding of major public policy issues, and work to influence public policy through education and advocacy. As a nonpartisan organization, the League of Women Voters does not endorse or oppose candidates, and we are proud to continue our long history of hosting candidate forums. All candidates who filed to run for the Wake County Board of Education were invited to participate in our candidate forums. Outreach included emails, phone calls, as well as certified letters inviting candidates to respond and provide citizens an opportunity to learn about their views. Thank you to the candidates who are with us today. The Wake County Board of Education is a local governing body of the Wake Public School System. It is the largest school district in North Carolina and the 14th largest in the United States. It serves a very diverse student body and has improved its graduation rate so that almost 91% graduate from high school. Its nine members are currently elected from nine separate county districts. Each member represents that district within the entire board and is elected by the, by the residents of that district. This race is nonpartisan, meaning that candidates are not running as representatives of a political party and their party affiliation is not listed on the ballot. The school board sets policy for the school system implemented by the superintendent and administrative staff. The board also adopts an annual budget proposal that includes its request for local funding from the Wake County Board of Commissioners, as well as a plan, its plan for using their allocated state and federal funds. The school board does not have taxing authority. Today, we welcome candidates from District 9, Michelle Morrow and Tyler Swanson. District 9 generally encompasses most of Cary and parts of Morrisville. All candidates live in District 9. Welcome, Michelle and Tyler. Thank you for joining us today. We will ask every candidate for the Wake County Board of Education the same questions. The questions will cover a range of issues relevant to the scope of the board. Before we begin, I would like to verify with the candidates today that they have not received the questions in advance. Can you both confirm that, please? Yes, I confirm that. Yes, I also confirm. Thank you both. You will now have two minutes for an opening statement. Please include in your remarks why you chose to run for school board and what makes you a good candidate for this position. And we will start today with Michelle Morrow. Please go ahead. Thank you. I am Michelle Morrow, and I am a wife, a mother of five. I've been a nurse for 29 years and an educator here in Wake County for the last eight years in the private sector. I am running for school board because I'm very concerned that the academic excellence in our Wake County School District has been plummeting. As you described at the beginning, the role of the Wake County School Board is to set policies that are in agreement with the laws of North Carolina and that are going to enhance the educational experience of every student. They are to manage a three billion dollar budget, nearly three billion dollar budget, as well as to be a liaison between the district and the members of the constituency, whether they be teachers, students, parents, or just concerned citizens. For the last eight years that I've lived in Cary, I have been very active in discuss in going to um, academic legislature meetings. I've been going to school board meetings as well as county commissioner meetings and trying to get the best education possible for our young people. And in addition, I am, I believe that I am the best person for this role because I'm the only candidate that is fighting for academic excellence and for financial transparency transparency, as well as to remove the social and the politically um, divisive curriculum that right now is in our is in our schools and that parents have been fighting against for the last two and a half years. In addition, um, I 
I am very honored to have the endorsements of people like the civil rights icon, Clarence Henderson, who has been fighting for liberty and justice and freedom since the 1960s sit in at the Woolworth lunch counter. In addition, Lieutenant Governor um, Mark Robinson has endorsed me for this position, as well as the Carolina Teachers Alliance, and the um, which is fighting for the rights of all of our teachers. And um, in addition, Kenny Zhu, who is an author and also the, um, the president of Color Us United. Um, I, I definitely am honored to have met and be supported by several people um, in the Black, Asian, Indian, African, and, um, and Arab communities, and I would be honored for your vote on November 8th. Thank you, Michelle. Um, and now, uh, Tyler Swanson, please go ahead. Thank you. When I announced my candidacy for the Wake County Board of Education, I uttered the words of Rita Pierce, a retired educator that said, every child deserves a champion, an adult who will never give up on them, who understands the power of connection and insists that they can become the best they could possibly be. And now more than ever, our students, our teachers, and our community deserves a champion who is going to fight for all students on the Board of Education. I'm the only candidate in this district in this race with actual classroom experience. So I am prepared to hit the ground running. I have the knowledge that it takes. I understand the duties of the Board of Education. And I will also represent to the best of my abilities, all of the students, the families, and the parents uh, in District 9. So I am running as a champion for our schools. I am honored to be that champion. And I look forward to sharing my vision uh, with the voters tonight on this call. Um, and for more information, you can always visit my website, swansonforwake.com. Thank you. Thank you, candidates. And now we're going to move on to the question part of the forum. And you each will have two minutes to answer each question and we will alternate uh, with who starts first. So the first question, the teacher pipeline issue is in the news frequently. Fewer college students are choosing education as their majors and teachers are retiring or leaving their profession for better pay. Wake County is currently facing a staffing shortage and reported in late August that they still need 400 more teachers. What strategies do you think would help Wake County public school system recruit and retain teachers? And Tyler Swanson, we'll start with you. Go ahead. Thank you for that question. And yes, we are seeing this teacher shortage across the nation. This is not unique to Wake County, but it's a nationwide issue. And as a former educator for the district, I understand that our teacher pipeline is shrinking simply because of the lack of respect that folks are having for this profession. Educators are the backbone for every single career in this country. And it is laughable that the North Carolina General Assembly has a starting pay of $37,000 for our classroom teachers. So we must increase the pay of our teachers in order to retain and recruit our teachers, but we also need the legislative body to restore the master pay that a lot of our teachers, that affects a lot of our teachers. Wake County Public Schools, half of our teachers in this district hold master's degrees, they hold um, PhDs, and they also even are, uh, we, le we lead in uh, national board certification, which is gold star standing teachers. So we must respect the profession. We must have a legislative body that understands and invests in public education, because when we invest in public education, we are investing in the heart and souls of our schools, which is a part of our communities. And we also cannot be the number one state to do business if our school system decides to decline. So we have to make sure that we are respecting these professions, these teachers who are doing the work every single day. And that respect has to come from the legislative body, the Board of Education, and from the stakeholders in our community. And I am willing and prepared to fight to increase the pay of our teachers by working closely with our county commissioners, working with the legislative body, and working closely also with some of these stakeholders and business leaders to be innovative on how we invest in our public school system. Thank you for the question. Thank you, Tyler. And now it's Michelle Morrow's turn to respond. Go ahead. 
Thank you. Uh, you know, I do, it is a very, it's a very troublesome issue that we are losing teachers. There is a natural attrition, as you know, because the majority of our teaching staff does end up being women. And for one of those things that I think that we really could as a healthcare professional, I think one of the ways that we can actually add benefit to um, being a teacher is if every two or three years that we would actually um, cause the insurance companies to have to compete for the best possible benefits packages um, at the lowest possible price, because I believe we do have the money within our educational system. The fact that we are getting nearly $11,000 per student per year, the problem is that that money is not first and foremost going to teachers, going into classroom resources where it belongs. The first dollar should always be spent in the classroom and promoting education. So I think if we can even increase the benefits package, we need to understand there are a lot of single moms who are working as teachers because that's an incredible way that they can be with their children because the schedule is so beneficial. So we need to remember that, um, that the benefits packages and that the increase in the pay is important. I would say this, that's something that is concerning. Um, when when my opponent wants to say that he has been in the classroom, I have to say for the last seven years, I have been at legislative meetings, at educational meetings, at school board meetings, and at county commissioner meetings, and I have never seen him um, actually going and speaking to those representatives. So when we are discussing um, who is going to be the one that already has connections with people in these areas on both sides of the aisle and is going to be able to put our teachers, um, to, to maintain teachers' um, longevity, uh, that is going to be myself. I have been an advocate um, my entire adult life, whether it's been as a nurse, as a foster parent, um, I've been a mentor, um, or whether it's been an educator right here in Wake County. Uh, we need people that are longstanding and not going to run to the next thing as soon as it's offered, which is what my opponent has done. Thank you. Um, we are now going to move on to the second question. Capital expenses are paid for with local property taxes. Building new schools must be carefully considered due to high costs of land and construction materials. Throughout Wake County, we have some schools that are under-enrolled and others that are overcrowded. What are your suggestions for how to best balance the school population and fully utilize our existing infrastructure? And now we will have Michelle Morrow go first. Go ahead. Thank you. You know, I was in a meeting several years ago with the um, Wake County tax assessors, and they were discussing the fact that most of our schools have been built on a 70 year contract with the builders. But sadly, many of them are being torn down after just 20 or 30 years because they're saying that the cost of renovating and fixing things, um, that it's just not worth it. So instead of putting in, let's say, $10 million into fixing the school, um, we end up just, you know, destroying it and having to create a new one which costs us over $100 million. I would say one of those things is we really need to go to our county commissioners. We need to go to our state legislators. We need to go to who wrote these contracts with these people that, that, these people that created these schools to begin with, and we need to hold them to their contract. We need to make sure that the schools that are being built are going to be able to last for the duration of the time that we're going to need them. Secondly, I know that right now it is not within the laws that we can expect developers to have to give money money from their profit of developing um, single family homes um, to back into the community. And I, but I think we need to revisit that. And that's why I think it's going to be important that whoever is on the school board is going to be able to have conversations and have liaisons within the legislative body, because I think it's important that the people that are already living in Wake County, that we don't do not bear the entire brunt of creating new school structures. I think that every community should have excellent elementary, middle, and high schools. Um, I think we can even look toward going to an extended elementary K through eight, and then maybe nine through 12. So we don't literally have to have the three tier program. That might be a way that we can we look at um, the areas that are developing. But I think there's a lot of creative ways that we can grow and still invest in the community that already exists and not expect the burden to fall completely on to the people that have lived here for generations, especially those that are on fixed incomes that find themselves um, in, on a retirement income. Thank you. And Tyler Swanson, it's your turn to respond. Do you mind repeating that question for me? I'm so sorry. Sure, no problem. Capital expenses are paid for with local property taxes. 
Building new schools must be carefully considered due to the high cost of land and construction materials. Throughout Wake County, we have some schools that are under-enrolled and others that are overcrowded. What are your suggestions for how to best balance the school population and fully utilize our existing infrastructure? Thank you for repeating that. Well, Western Wake is one of the fastest growing uh, areas of Wake County. And when my opponent mentioned the fees from the developer, those are called impact fees that have been blocked by the uh, North Carolina General Assembly. So I think we in Wake County are grateful for the taxpayers that are picking up the burden of funding our schools and maintaining that, but the ball has to go back to the General Assembly. And there is a plan for that and it's called Leandro. Leandro is the roadmap that is uh, that is designed as a blueprint to help us fully fund our schools. And I am willing to work closely with those county commissioners and those uh, elected officials to see where we are with this. But we also have to be innovative with our schools as well because technology, our students learn best with technology. And so we are seeing that technology is at the center of education and our schools must really reflect and be innovative uh, with how our students are learning. And so I do believe that yes, uh, the, we, we have to, uh, place everything on the map and at the drawing block uh, to make sure that we are investing and that we're building schools to meet the needs of all of our students, all of our families, and also making sure that uh, we are our plans to ensure that these schools are not overcrowded or un under under uh, uh, fund not um, under. Uh, population, that we are are looking at those maps and, and looking at the, the plans for that. And so I am, will lean on my colleagues on the Board of Education to ensure that we are meeting those needs and meeting the criteria for that. Thank you. Thank you, Tyler. We're going to move on to the third question. School board members are elected in a district, but they govern the entire school system. In your view, what makes an effective school board member and what do you think are their key responsibilities? And we will start this time with Tyler Swanson. Go ahead. Thank you for that question. Um, so it is imperative that a board of education member is able to collaborate with their peers, that is knowledgeable and that understands uh, the duties of the board of education. And I believe that I am that person. The, the key three reasons, the key three roles of our board of education uh, members is to hire, fire, and guide the superintendent to meet the needs of all students, is to uh, serve as the governing body for the Wake County Public Schools, and also is to be the biggest champion and advocate for our public school system, teachers, and students. Um, and we also have to go out and recruit and retain various business to partner with our, our, our system so we can continue to be the number one uh, district in the state and also paving the way for other uh, local districts to see what we're doing in Wake County. So I believe that those three things, collaboration is key. Not only must you collaborate with your peers on the board, you have to collaborate with the county commissioners as well as those members in the North Carolina General Assembly. And I am prepared to do that. I have the knowledge and the understanding of what it takes to get things done. And I will not leave anything on the table or off the table to make sure that our students are having the needs they need uh, as it relates to their education system. Thank you. Thank you, Tyler. And next we will hear from Michelle Morrow. Go ahead, Michelle. Thank you. You know, I believe that any elected official that their number one role is to secure the rights of their constituents and the people that voted them into office. And um, as we have stated, you know, what the specific roles are, I think that because I think one of the big things that our school board has been failing at is listening to the community and the parents. As a matter of fact, for the last two and a half years, our parents were locked out of their children's schools for over a year's time, almost two years time. And then when they went back into school, um, they were not allowed to come into the public forum of the school board meetings. As I said, many years I have been going to public school board meetings and there is not an attitude of, um, of representation reciprocity. There's not a discussion that happens with the school board. Being on the school board, um, you know, being a mom of five and having to advocate, as I said, as a nurse in many different areas, I am very well trained at um, trying to find middle ground with people that don't always have the same, <clears throat> excuse me, belief systems as me. But I think what's most important 
first and foremost is the education of our children. And that needs to be the number one goal because education is the greatest equalizer. It is the greatest opportunity setter for our young people. And so that needs to be the ultimate goal. And so we need to be welcoming to people in the community. We need to be the place that when parents and are having issues, when their children are struggling, we need to be the place that they can come to if they're not getting their needs met at the local school board level. And that needs to change. I would like for the school board to be the place that everyone wants to come and hang out every, every other Tuesday night um, because they feel like it is a community environment and we are all doing working together to collaborate. I believe that teachers, parents should be collaborating together for the good of every single student. Because our future depends on it. Our children's future depends on it. And that is the role of education to prepare our children for adulthood. Thank you. Uh, next, we'll go on to our fourth question. North Carolina ranks 39th in the nation for pu per pupil expenditures and 38th in teacher pay. In Wake County, we depend a lot on local funds to supplement the state's budget. Do you think our current school budget is adequate for the needs of our school district? And please explain why or why not. And this time, Michelle will go first. Go ahead, Michelle. Thank you. I do believe that $11,000 per student per year should be adequate. What I think is not happening is we are not prioritizing education first and foremost. As I said in my opening statement, I believe that we are focusing too much on, we have a lot of administrative overhead. We have um, way too much uh, discrepancy between those that are in administration and those that are actually boots on the ground in the classrooms. I think that we are spending an exorbitant amount on things that are not that are not focused on teaching our children to read and to write and to do math. You know, you mentioned at the very beginning of this that um, we can brag about a 91% graduation rate, but tragically, this last year, nearly one half of every one of our graduating seniors did not pass their proficiency exams in math and in reading, and that does not set them up for the best success going leaving um, the high school years. And so I think that there needs to be absolutely a, a full audit of everything and where our money is going. And if it comes to the point that we do need more money from somewhere, we need to tell the taxpayers exactly why we need the money for and what specifically it is going to go to. But before we just say that we're going to pour money, pour money, pour money, we owe the taxpayers of Wake County, we owe the teachers, we owe the parents and the concerned citizens to tell them where has our money gone up until this point? Because I believe that we have the money, we have the talented staff, and we have the know-how. In the 1990s, we were one of the number one school systems in the country. We know how to get this done. We need to go back to the basics and go back to when we were being successful and figure out how we can do that once again. Thank you, Michelle. And Tyler Swanson, it is your turn to answer the question. Well, thank you for that question. And I'm, unfortunately, I do wish that we had $11,000 spent per child per student, but the correct number is $9,958 that goes to per student uh, in North Carolina, which is less than our neighboring states in South Carolina and in Virginia, where they spend a little over 10,000 per student. So this is the thing. When we invest in our schools, when we invest in our students, it is an investment that continues to keep on giving. When we invest into our, our schools, it's a continuing, it's, the, it's, the, it's a blessing that keeps giving back. And so I am grateful for the Wake County taxpayers and the county commissioners for picking up the duties of our failed legislator that has not fully funded our public schools in the last 10 years under the Republican leadership. And so that is why our numbers are, are, are that's why we rank 40, 43rd uh, in per people funding. And that's why our teacher salaries is very laughable for starting at $37,000. So we need a general assembly that's gonna invest in our schools, that is gonna invest in every student. And this is the thing. Leandro is that plan. I have been saying it over and over. We must lead with Leandro. Uh, Leandro will cost $1.6 billion. The North Carolina General Assembly is sitting on $6.6 .6 billion of our dollars, taxpayer dollars. So we do not have to keep raising the taxes on our Wake County citizens. The money is sitting in a pot that should be used 
uh, to fund our schools and to invest in our students. And so I do hope that we have a legislator, uh, legislative body that will put our students first and that will put our teachers first and will put our communities first when they decide to invest in our public schools. And I hope it is after November because our students cannot continue to wait. Thank you, Tyler. And thank you, Michelle. And now we'll go on to our fifth question. School safety and security is a complex topic with various organizations and interest groups tackling the issues from different angles, but clearly everyone is concerned about school safety. What is being done well by Wake County Public School System? And what do you suggest is needed to improve school safety? And this time, Tyler Swanson, if you want to start. Thank you so much for that question. Well, there's a few things. We do know that nationwide, school safety is a is a very sensitive issue but it's an issue that is affecting all of our all of our our families and we need a board member who's going to be prepared to address that and i am that person i've read through the executive summary that was done by an outside agency that did an audit of every wake county school in our district now of course the executive summary is listed on the wake county school website because we don't need to tell our you know those adversaries out there what's you know where our weaknesses are so there are some very key recommendations in that uh, executive summary that I would support. I would also, once elected in November, will raise the question, where are we with this? What more must we do to protect our students? This audit was completed in November, so I will be asking those key questions of where we are, where is the funding, and if we need to go to the General Assembly to pay for this, then I will go and meet with that Wake delegation and those leaders. But we also have to understand, too, that it takes a true village to keep our students safe. We must need our school resource officers, we need our school psychologists, we need our school nurses, and we need our school counselors, as well as our teachers, to work towards uh, saving and keeping our schools safe. Now, I have to applaud the district for the MOU that was completed with all the municipalities. And I will say that Wake County school research officers have the most training than any other uh, municipality in the state. So I am grateful for their leadership and I'm grateful for the work that we do. But this is the thing. Just like the teacher pipeline shortage, there is a shortage with school uh, resource officers, there is a shortage with nurses. So the profession is all about respect, and we have to respect one another, and we must respect those that are in control uh, to help keep us safe. And so I will be raising those questions. I would employ those to go check out my website because you can't fully talk about school safety in two minutes. So Swanson for Wake backslash issues. Thank you, Tyler. And next we'll hear from Michelle. Go ahead. You know, safety encompasses so many things just beyond having student resource officers, but the audit that Tyler just referenced, one of the biggest things that they recommended is that we have a student resource officer in every single school in Wake County. And right now, the majority of our elementary schools have no student resource officers. As a matter of fact, the last time that I went through um, and looked, only Holly Springs and maybe a couple of elementary schools in Apex had student resource officers. And the reason for that was because those cities themselves had asked their city police officers to handle that. But as a nurse, there's a safety issue that is not being discussed that I think it needs to be of paramount importance. As we have seen over the last 20 years, the number of children that are taking medications and that have medical issues um, has really been skyrocketing. I mean, I've seen it firsthand as a nurse. And I, it is imperative that we prioritize having medical professionals in the, in the realm of, I would love to see at least one school nurse in every school district. That is an area that I believe that Wake County has failed. They, they have been sharing a nurse for decades, um, one nurse between four or five high schools. And let me, uh, let me just explain. We have teachers and we have office staff that are expected to be testing children's blood sugar levels and giving them insulin. This is incredibly dangerous. It is not within the purview of their licensure or their ability, and they're not comfortable with this, and nor should they be. I think every parent understands how quickly an accident can happen. Children are prone to seizures. They're prone to accidents, either at PE class or out at the playground. They Many of them have food allergies or allergies to bees. Many of them do have diabetes diabetes or other chronic diseases, we definitely need to fund uh, nurses and not expect the teachers to be the nurses. And we need to prepare every staff to be first aid and CPR certified on campus. 
Thank you, Michelle. And before we get to closing statements, I just want to thank you to say thank you to our candidates for coming today to participate in the virtual candidate forum. We recognize that running and serving elected office is a considerable, considerable commitment of time, energy, and often sacrificed opportunities. The League, along with the residents of Wake County, is grateful that we have so many capable fellow citizens who are willing to step forward to serve the important duties as a member of the Wake County Board of Education. Now you each have two minutes for your closing uh, statements, and Michelle Morrow, you may go first. I very much appreciate your time, and I would be honored to be the liaison, to be your voice on the Wake County School Board come November. I believe that I bring professionalism, I bring a history of advocacy um, in all walks of life for the last 40 years, and I pray that you would um, that you would seek to have people, have me be your representative. I believe that the parents, that the concerned citizens want for our money to go into investing into the next generation so that they will be prepared to be critically thinking and able to handle conflict, able to handle problems and problem solve and have desire and drive and excitement about their future. I would love to bring back to our high schools work study programs and internships. I believe that every child after they have spent Eight, eight hours a day, five days a week, nine months out of a year for 13 years, that they should be excited about entering into the community and giving back to that community. I would love for the, every one of them to be able to pursue whatever their highest dream is. I believe that our money is important. People work hard for every dollar that they have, and we need to be responsible for that. The board needs to be transparent, and it has not been for decades. And I will bring transparency to that. And the other thing that is important is we need to be an open place for discussion. We need to be a place where people feel welcome to come and to discuss the very difficult things that they're dealing with with children. Children, when they are suffering, the entire family suffers. And we need for the board to be a place that is going to support entire families. We need to give back the parents the authority that is vested in them as parents. And we need, we can, I believe, make Wake County Schools not only the largest in North Carolina, Carolina, but the best in North Carolina. So I would appreciate your vote on November 8th. For more information, please go to michellefourwakeschools.com and thank you for your time. Thank you, Michelle. And Tyler Swanson, if you would like to give your two minute closing, you may begin. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to first start by thanking the League of Women Voters for this opportunity to share my vision. You know, my personal, my personal and professional life has been about public service, and I will be honored to serve as this community District 9 representative. We've heard a lot in this forum, and we have to understand that our words, our integrity, they all matter. Truth matters. Truth matters. And I have to say, when someone shows you who they are the first time, we must believe them. Our students are watching, our parents are watching, and our communities is watching as well. And so I am a man of integrity. I believe in our public schools. I am a product of public schools. And I do believe that there must be a champion sitting in these seats that, are, that is going to advocate for all of our students, all of our families, and all of our, all of our stakeholders. And I believe that I am that person. So I would encourage you to go to my website, swansonforwake.com, and learn more about the issues. And also, I would also ask for your support in November. You may start voting early on October uh, 20th through November 5th at any location that is listed. Um, I am on the back of the ballot, the last name under uh, District 9. So flip that ballot over. It's a very long ballot this year, and I would ask for your support because we must continue to move our district forward and we must invest in our students. So thank you all for this opportunity, and I look forward to serving as your next school board member. Thank you. Thanks to both of you. As we end our forum, we would like to encourage you to visit our website, vote411.org to learn more about the candidates on your ballot and find out the latest information on early voting as well as polling place hours and locations. Please make your own plan to vote and encourage others to vote in the upcoming election. Thank you again for joining us.